Hello and welcome to this module, The 12 Faces of the Warrior. So within this module, we are going to be exploring the warrior archetype through the lens of the zodiac signs. The warrior is deeply correlated with leadership. So I'm going to be going through my take on how each sign can be a leader in its own right and in, within its own area. So the warrior archetype, if we open on a little bit of background, so it's very much one of leadership, fighting for a cause, protection of others, empowerment of self, when it's in the light degree. When it's in the shadow, it can be a more destructive force that can cause damage to oneself as well as the people around oneself. So the warrior archetype is ruled by Mars. This is the planet of action, aggression, war, and passion, amongst other things. Mars rules Aries and Scorpio, which are two signs, especially Aries, which tend to be more correlated with the warrior archetype. However, as we will go through within this um, within this module, there are many expressions of, of the warrior archetypes and many expressions of how we can lead ourselves and others. So uh, this is quite a Martian module, let's say, being ruled by Mars and talking about warriorship. This is very Martian themes, but it's not all about weapons and armory because a very important part of being in our embodiment of the warrior is being the peaceful warrior. So if we think to Mahatma Gandhi, if we think to Martin Luther King, peaceful warriors through their warriorship and their, through their leadership were able to affect massive social political change within their different areas or you know the 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 environmental activist this is the warrior that never has to go near a weapon because their weapons are within them using their heart and using their mind using their communication to affect change so many different expressions of the warrior it's not all about um swords and guns and explosions um and it's very much not about that um yeah because this this can a, a lot of this war and aggression can be seen as the shadow side of uh, of the warrior archetype so we're moving into aries quite soon um as a season so this is very much the um archetype of of war and conflict and unfortunately well war and conflict is a necessary part of the life that we live we look into the natural world it's um you know a constant state of, of war and conflict so through this uh kind of shiva energy uh there's a destruction uh can kind of more things be built from that so some things need to be destroyed to be rebuilt such as the karmic cycle of life such as the way that the wheel turns nothing nothing is um everything is temporary nothing is static everything will change so when we talk about war and conflict, um, uh, as well as uh, every single archetype that there is, uh, each one is a double-edged sword. So there's always the light and the shadow expression. A warrior can protect innocence or destroy. So a sword isn't inherently good or bad. It depends on the energy that is wielding that sword whether that sword is a literal sword or a metaphorical sword. So what is the energy behind your actions? Um, what is the energy behind other people's actions within life? So, yeah, it, it is like the sword is a tool, but depending on the energy behind it, depends on the result that one gets from it. So... Yeah, archetypal empowerment. So, you know, every single sign has the capacity for warriorship and leadership in its own right. Now, even if we don't have certain elements of um, different uh, signs within our chart, we still very much have that energy within us because we are connected to the all. And, you know, if, if we are God, then there are, uh, we are everything. So even though we may not have certain elements in our chart, we can still call upon those archetypal energies. So 
what kind what archetypal energy can we call upon even if it's not so dominant within our chart so i really want, want you to really bear that in mind as we go through this because you know you may not have certain elements within the chart but that doesn't mean that you can't call upon the, those elements so me personally uh there was a time last year whereby i was i don't have any sagittarian energy in my chart but i was calling upon the sagittarian energy to step into those different themes and search for truth um using that archetype and activating that archetype within my psyche for specific purposes so we can also do this with uh, all of the other archetypes we don't need to stick to the zodiac zodiac archetypes so you know who do i need to be in this different situation what archetypal energy do i need to to, to call upon right now i'm calling upon the teacher archetype to embody this so i'm able to convey this information Later on, I may need to call upon um, like networker archetype if I'm looking to promote an event, let's say. So when I'm in the gym, I'm very much enacting the warrior archetype because this massively helps me um, psychologically move through that gym session um, in a more powerful way. So we can call upon any uh, archetype uh, at any time given the situation. And I really encourage that because it can help you move through situations um in a much more empowered powerful way and um also yeah you can pretend by calling upon certain ar archetypes and activating them within your psyche you can be privy to insight that you might not have had without that activation of that archetype so yeah um so with that in mind that we actually have every single energy and we can call upon them if we choose to we're going to kick off with aries so Aries is the first um, zodiac sign, first being the, one of the key words, the key themes of Aries, the initiators, the first to do things. So the Aries is actually the prime warrior archetype. So first in the zodiac, so this is kind of like the first guy into battle leading the charge. This is Aries energy. So leading the charge, think of the ram, the ram charging along and um, <laughs> butting into things, um, which is uh, quite funny manifestation of the Aries energy. It can butt and butt and butt and keeps going and going and going and keeps trying and trying and trying. So they're very much the pioneers. So Aries energy will, will launch into things and uh, they might fail, but they'll get back up and launch into more things. Now, because of this like pioneering um, energy, uh, they can make, make good leadership energy because someone needs to go somewhere first for others to then follow. So again, first, Aries first. So you find a lot of Aries, um, a lot of people with strong Aries aspects within their chart make, um, they usually fall into um, positions related to conflict. So um, soldiers, uh, athletes, lots of physical exertion uh, i found out recently that gary kasparov the um, chess world champion for a number of years he had tons of aries placements so this is um you know conflict within the realm of the game of chess so they can be prone to, so they're a fire sign very fiery uh, which can make them uh, very passionate which is like a really key word for Aries. Like, so that, that, that passion, people are inspired by that passionate energy and, 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 and are able to follow that. Um, but also the other side of the fire is that they can be prone to anger and impatience. So yeah, this leads me on to say that the, the warrior has an intimate dance with the shadow. If the warrior is temp tempestuous and acting in rashness, they can make costly mistakes in the moment of reaction. So this is a um, cha a potential challenge for it, the Aries energy because they're very instinctual and they act very much within the moment, which can sometimes lead to difficult situations. So tempering the fire. And when we look at this in, in for the perspective of, of leadership, yeah, it's great to be pioneering and, and moving forward and, uh, you know, doing all of all of this stuff. But we need to be looking behind us as to whether we're leading in the best way so that people can follow. So Aries is very much a sign which is self-orientation. This is it's fun, one of its functions. It's first, it's about the self. So um, Aries needs to be careful that, yeah, it doesn't leave others behind and that it's not acting all towards the self. So 
Um, it's kind of like if you imagine like the solitary ram on the hill. Uh, it's like solitary, not lonely, because it doesn't really care. It, it just wants to be on the hill and it's quite happy being there by itself because it's the initiator, it's moving first. But we live in a world of relationship. So this is where Libra, which is Aries opposition, helps to counterbalance the self-natured, um, uh, well, the self-nature of Aries because Libra is a sign of relationship. So both signs in opposition can learn from each other. Libra tends to need to be more self-orientated whereas Aries wants to be more related with others. So the undeveloped air energy of an Aries can be seen as selfish um, because they are self-orientated. However, the more developed Aries starts to expand their self of self, sense of self to include others. So their sense of self will include the family, the friends, the community, and eventually the world at large. In this way, the Aries can evolve to step into its fullest leadership, whereby it's not charging forward with only thinking of what it wants to do. It's all it's charging forward, but making sure the people behind are looked after at the same time. So Aries, prime warrior archetype. So this is a really great energy to be able to call upon when you need that warrior energy. So especially during the month of Aries, we're looking at springtime, everything's sprouting, um, everything's coming up. Uh, the energy is shifting towards this more, um, you know, we, we've, we've come out of the slow coldness, wetness of winter and Pisces season and charging forward into the new astrological year with Aries. So it's a great energy to harness. Um, but yeah, it's always with every single archetype, there's a light and shadow expression. So understanding the light expressions and extending understanding the shadow expressions and moving as much within to the light as we can is very much the name of the game while mitigating and eventually moving ourselves to a place of healing so that we're not expressing the shadow tendencies so generally speaking when we're acting within the light side of an archetype this brings us love and connection when we're acting in the shadow side of an archetype this will bring us separation so moving on to Taurus, so the bull, quality of the earth. So I very much see Taurus energy as being like the stable and grounded leadership. So yeah, just like a, a very dependable leader that, is, that can uh, be, say, fixed on one thing and carry that task through being a fixed energy. So grounded leadership is like so important because yeah, like Aries is great for like the initiatory uh, energy needed to move forward and, and take the charge. But unless that charge is grounded, you know, that fire is going to burn out. So in this way, each sign has a corrective function upon the last. So yeah, like Taurus is a corrective function for the fire of Aries. So Taurus helps to ground the energy that Aries has established. So stable and grounded re leadership. So Taurus is able to fix its fixate on a des destination and do what is necessary to achieve it. Taurus energy is in for the long haul. It's fixed in its nature. So yeah, really, really great person to have on board or really great energy on board to, to see a project through. So the bull can move on through stormy weather staying steadfast to its objective so you know kind of puts me in mind of like a bull in the field in rain doesn't really care it's it's just it's just there a lot of the time the rain's not even really affecting it that much because it's it's just like yeah man i'm just really grounded really steadfast and i'm just gonna stay here so taurus also rules the resources so it's very much a yin leadership energy. So having the resources needed to achieve a task, um, being able to prepare everything that's needed for, for a project because yin is the more powerful energy than yang because yin creates energy, whereas yang divides energy. So in terms of resources, this could be the, 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 the taurine very much thinks about you know, what do I need to accomplish this task and how can I accumulate what is needed to accomplish this task? Whereas Aries doesn't care. It's just, it's just bang, let's just do it. Whereas Taurus is like, okay, hold up. You know, we, we need to make sure that this is looked after as coming from a grounded place so that it can go the distance 
and survive. So, and uh, you know, if if you want to um, put together a really great team for a project, you know, get a person from each uh, side of the zodiac because you know this is going to be a really three hundred sixty degree great team. So, um, yeah, so very much being a yin leadership energy. However, when roused, Taurus is a force to be reckoned with. So, yeah, it, it can be um, tempestuous and have a reputation for, for a temper. So this is where um, channeling and controlling anger is extremely important because, you know, there will be situations within life and people within life that will rouse us like, like, like the bull. But how do we direct that anger? How do we direct that frustration um, as leaders and as warriors? How are we controlling and maintaining ourselves? Because, yeah, you know, acting in rashness or anger doesn't create the best results most of the time. Now, there is a place for conscious anger. Um, so say, for example, if um, if a child is about to step into the road without seeing then this can be a, a good time to enact a very conscious form of anger as a means to get the child to, to stop in its tracks in an emergency situation. So it's not to make anger good or bad. Um, you know, again, these are, these are tools. Um, it's a double-edged sword. Uh, anger tends to have the polarity more towards the negative, but it can also be used as a, as a, um, as a force for good as well. So, you know, again, like we, we look at uh, Mahatma Gandhi as the previous example, like very deep anger um, that drove a lot of uh, his uh, his actions, um, which he was able to transmute into something wholly positive to in order to liberate the the um, India from the rule of the British Empire. So anger, when used consciously, can be used to affect um good a good change and you know good things so yeah it's like how are we controlling ourselves and channeling and controlling our anger as leaders so moving on to gemini so this is very much the so gemini the master communicators of the zodiac wheel so gemini this is very much leadership through communication leadership through communication being the master communicators so three aspects around communication which i want to share with you presence position and communication so the three powers that are essential for effective leadership the three powers effective for um that are essential for effective leadership presence position and communication so presence is showing up and choosing choosing to be present therefore creating a magnetic personality. Position is a willingness to take a stand and for standing up for what your values are and, and who you are, what do you stand for? And communication is looking at aspects of content, timing, context, not being blunt and using words that inspire. How are we communicating our message? Are we working on our communication? Are we working on our language? Are we looking at the effect of our words? Are we evaluating how we can become more effective women in leadership by looking at our style of communication? Gemini is a very uh, changeable and adaptable energy being mutable. So are we um, changing our the way that we're communicating with people based off of who in front, is in front of us? Are we able to change our way of communicating uh, based on the situation presented with us. So this is very much, yeah, the, the, the area of Gemini. Now, Gemini has the strong ability to be able to use words as weapons. Again, it's, it's a double-edged sword. So, you know, words can be used uh, negatively to create harm, but they can also be used for, for good. So, um, you know, I, I think of, example of like a, a a law like a law case whereby there's been a a victim of some description and the um the lawyer is using his words or her words to affect some sort of change and stand up for what is right again 
for 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 the victim. But again, it's the double edged sword because sometimes words can be used to get off uh, someone who maybe um, yeah has really done something wrong. So being able to temper our communication and you know apply it in the most effective way to touch, move, and inspire others. Gemini is very malleable and adaptable to diff difficult situations as well, which is a key component of uh, good leadership and good warriorship, the ability to change course when it's needed. Whereas um, the fixed signs of um, Scorpio, Leo, um, Taurus and Aquarius, they're, they're fixed on a certain direction and find it difficult to adapt, which in some circumstances being fixed on a direction is great. In other cases, we need to be able to change direction. This is where Gemini is really talented. So this is a very much a yang sign um, being uh, correlated with the air. So the, the zodiac wheel goes from yin, uh, from yang to yin, yang to yin. So Aries, yang, Taurus, yin, Gemini, yang, Cancer, yin, and so on. So communication being uh, a quite, quite, quite a yang principle, However, within communication, there's all, also the, the yin and yang of communication. So when we are expressing and talking, this is the, the yang of communication. When we're listening, this is the yin of communication. So effective leadership and warriorship is also about being able to listen to others. So there's a saying that I really like, uh, you've got two, two ears and one mouth, so you should use them in proportion. <laughs> so moving on to cancer next so this is very much uh, it's a yin sign a water sign very much in tune with others which is a very important aspect of leadership is being able to feel others what's happening for other people so that you can navigate that leadership through through care caring for others really important part of leadership you know it's not all about uh, you know, being on the battlefield with the flaming sword and kicking ass. No, it, it's also very much about nurturing and showing leadership and warriorship through, yeah, looking after others, which is the theme of cancer. So very much leadership within the home, creating a nurturing and supporting environment for others to grow. So, you know, this kind of puts me in mind of like the um, the sensei, who is nurturing his students um it's like kind of like uh yeah like like a really good example of this is like mr miyagi and uh daniel son from the karate kid so um mr miyagi is very much within his warrior archetype but in a very cancerian way so you can see like you know he's he's teaching daniel son about like nurturing the bonsai tree nurturing so it can grow and teaching him all of these life lessons, nurturing the student to grow. So this is very much how I see the warrior energy within Cancerian themes. So it's yin, um, looking after others, nurturing. So also the, the caregiver archetype. So it also puts me in mind of like, you know, the... Um, the matron of the ward uh, looking after all of the people in, in the ward. Sometimes, you know, there, there's this classic archetypal stern matron of the ward, you know, having to enact that warrior energy in a, in a Cancerian way in order to maintain a, a, a good ward or even like um, nurses in, in wartime uh, and medics in wartime as well. You know, this uh, on, on the battlefield, like the, the medic is very much the Cancerian aspect of, of the battlefield um maybe not having a weapon but going in there with the into into the war and acting the warrior uh to help nurture and save other people's lives and 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 like the 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 nurses as well um saw a film a while back with um showing the nurses going into uh you know the trenches within world war one and doing what they could for to help the soldiers so this is very much uh warriorship through nurturing others cancer and how can something grow if not planted in fertile soil and nurtured? 
So moving on to Leo. So now this is a, another, this is a prime warrior archetype. Um, very much the uh, king and queen archetypes. And this can sometimes be the, the warrior king and the warrior queen, because sometimes they will need to defend the kingdom. So Leo being the, the kind of royal archetypes, uh, archetype. So defense of the kingdom. And yeah, um, they're going to need to make difficult decisions as well. So um, now, in my opinion, Leo is actually more suited to leadership than Aries. So a lot of people, when they think of like leadership, they always think of like Aries as, as the prime leader. But it's like uh, it, it, it kind of feels like um, Aries kind of burns really quick, really uh, fast and is great, a, a great initiator, yeah, initiatory force but maybe doesn't have the steadfast nature to to rule and to 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 really be in that sustained leadership role now there are two different qualities of fire uh, aries is a cardinal fire so the cardinal is an initiatory force leo is a fixed fire so fixed like taurus scorpio and aquarius these are good at seeing projects through and seeing things through so being fixed in the um in the position and being steadfast and relatively unimmovable so that this is uh this can be good and bad as with everything is a double-edged sword so you know too fixed in the position then you know the the leo or any other archetype isn't going to necessarily listen to others and then this may be the downfall but also sometimes we also need to be fixed in our approach um and not be rocked by the forces that are trying to put us off balance so this is leo leo energy so yeah i think more suited to leadership than aries because of the fixed nature leo is very energy is very much the warrior of the heart leading with love so the ability to inspire others um so i, I kind of think of um uh yeah like um king theoden in lord of the rings uh with a rousing speech uh before the charge charge being very much Ares energy with him out in front but also the way he was able to rouse his um the the people of rohan with his with his speech was very much like led with the heart so the warrior of the heart leading with love fire and inspiration with Leo being uh, Yang in polarity. Now, one thing for Leo to, to be aware of is pride. So the, the, the pride of, of lions, pride of lions. So pride can also be a downfall, a double-edged sword. Pride can be a good thing in terms of like, I'm proud of something and this is gonna motivate me to do more or motivate others. But also too much pride can be a difficult thing to navigate. So Leo also is very inspiring as a leader, but needs to be mindful of their light. So um, yeah, like they're very much the sun, they're ruled by the sun, so they shine on everything. So part of the challenge for Leo is, uh, is being so much in this natural leadership role is letting others uh, or being aware of others and letting others step into that leadership role, letting others shine. Last quality of, of Leo that uh, is really great for, for all um, warriors and leaders to embody is loyalty. So Leos are very much lo lo um, known for their loyalty, as are uh, many of the other fixed signs fixed uh, on a specific thing, loyal to a specific cause, um, sometimes to a fault. Again, everything is a double-edged sword. When we go too far into the yin or too far into the yang, we're going to be out of balance. So how do we keep the balance? Yeah, loyalty being a great quality for a leader and warrior. So Virgo, the Virgo energy. So I very much see this as the strategist when it comes to the warrior expression of the Virgo archetype. So Virgo is very grounded, yet adaptable to situations at the same time. Mercurial, like Gemini, so good with themes of communication in a similar way that Gemini is, but slightly different. 
being able to see all of the components needed in a project um so and being very adaptable to whatever is needed within within the time within their leadership so very virgo is very detail orientated so they're going to be able to see all of the parts um and also look after people because they're going to have a very very deep understanding of what other people need so Virgo, I see, is very much a leader in service to others. So a leader in service to others. One of the key themes of Virgo is service to others and helping other people out. So in this way, they can be extremely attentive. They're usually very, very attentive people, very attentive energy, very nurturing energy in a, in a similar way to cancer. Um, but obviously slightly different. And yeah, but Virgo energy when it comes to the service, this is something I'm I'm always very inspired by uh, when I look at Virgo energy and and people really exhibiting selfless service, um, just for the for the joy of helping another person. It's like a very pure, very beautiful energy. Um, Virgo is correlated with the maiden, so a very pure sign. So yeah, it's just this very beautiful energy that I think you know. I think a good leader um, is very much there to serve serve the people that are in, in their charge. So, you know, if we think of the benevolent king or queen, they're acting in service of the kingdom rather than the kingdom being in service to them. The kingdom is in service to them. They generally more concerned with power and they generally go more into the tyrant archetype. Whereas like the good king and queen, they're in service to the kingdom. So, yeah, now one thing with Virgo is that they, where they can be so um, infused with the service of others, they can sometimes forget about service to the self. So this is where a sign like Aries is uh, very proficient, service to the self, not so much to others. Virgo is more service to others rather than the self. So it's having the understanding that we can only help others to the degree in which we can help ourselves. So we always need to look after ourselves first need, so that we're in a good position to be able to help others. So for, it's the same reason why the where, when there's a plane crash or when there's trouble with the plane, you put the gas mask on you first before you put it on the other person. And this is comes back to something called the I, we, and all concept. I before we always, which is a concept from Paul Check. So... I is the relationship with self. We is the relationship with uh, the people around us. All is the relationship with people at large. If we're putting the we and the all before the self, it's not sustainable, creates resentment and eventual burnout. So this is a really poignant um, aspect for Virgo to um, to be aware of. Um, but yeah, absolutely beautiful energy that I feel every leader needs to really um, embody and think about is service to others because... <laughs> If you're leading without having service to others as your primary focus, then the question is, why are you leading? So, yeah, leave that for uh, to ponder over. So the next sign in the wheel is Libra. So Libra, the one of the key themes with Libra is relationships. So all leadership is about relationship. So now Libra understands the dynamics of others and is great at establishing harmony among other people through understanding all sides to an equation. Now, at the same time, Libra can potentially, I say potentially because I don't want to load this because it's you know, not always going to be the case, but that there, there may be the potential for them to find it challenging to step into leadership roles. So whereas Aries finds it easy, um, Libra may, may find it more challenging. So this is where, um, you know, having qualities of the other in the opposition is really useful. So um, now Aries might be too instinctual and self-orientated for um, uh, very effective um, leadership unless they um, develop themselves. So Libra can put the brakes on Aries through being patient, measuring the facts and always thinking of others. Now, essential skills for effective leadership and warriorship so being patient measuring the facts and always thinking of others like you know think back to mr miyagi sensei <laughs> um so yeah no um 
this is this is the dynamic of Libra and Aries, self and other. So we need both for effective leadership, absolutely. Because remember, Aries being the the solitary realm on the hill, without the relate focus on relationship, because it's so focused on self. There's no leadership there. Uh, Libra as well. If there's too much focus on relationships and too much focus on the the balance and harmony, there's not enough polarity to create the 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 leadership role, that leadership figure that people can rally around. So this is where integration of both signs. So if you find that you're more dominant in Aries or Libra, then okay, how can we use the lessons of the opposition to balance myself as a more effective leader? and warrior which is true of all of the oppositions all of the oppositions um are in some ways opposite in other ways similar so aries and libra are both cardinal signs initiators so good at starting things uh, being first now one area where libra can potentially make an, an incredibly effective warrior is in the area of social justice very very important to libra themes of social justice so you might find them in uh, mediation roles um careers in law um any areas that will help to bring social justice and through their ability to see all sides of the equation um yeah they make great communicators and uh, great mediators Libra, even uh, though it's ruled by uh, Venus, is considered a masculine sign because it's con um, concerned with the uh, alignment with the air element, which is a masculine element. So moving on to Scorpio. So Scorpio and Aries are two expressions of Mars. We will, yeah, Scorpio is the other expression of Mars. So Aries being very much the the war, the aggression, the fire of Mars. Um, Scorpio is very much the 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 deeper nature um, of of conflict and that Mars brings. So, as an analogy, you can think of Aries like the machine gun, whereas Scorpio is like the sniper rifle. So, the machine gunner will just be going hell for leather, shooting everything in in their path, um, spraying bullets everywhere. Whereas the the sniper rifle, the Scorpio, will kind of lie in wait, sometimes for days, picking out its target, waiting, fixed nature, fixed on a on a uh, on a on a specific task or objective, uh, which can also lend into obsession. So uh, and also something about like the sniper rifle being penetrative. Penetrative. Scorpio is a very penetrative sign. It seeks to penetrate the depths. Um, of oneself, life, and is concerned with shadow investigation. So very much hunter energy. Um, if you if you think of like the hunter, um, kind of um, stalking through the forest, this is like very scorpionic energy. So Scorpio's fixed, which like Taurus and Leo and Aquarius uh, has the ability to see things through. So uh, I think like great quality. Uh, Every quality is great for leadership, you know, fixed, cardinal or mutable in their own different ways. But like, like, like the fixed really, really has, um, you know, I think this is great quality for leadership because it's, it's, it's an energy that's able to see things through um, and um, and yeah, remain steadfast. Albeit Scorpio is water sign, so of all of the fixed signs, uh, bar Aquarius, which is air, you could you could argue that there's more malleability and flexibility within uh, Scorpio. However, once the kind of target is set, they will kind of pursue it. Um, uh, yeah, quite quite vehemently. So um, Scorpio is also the survivalist of the zodiac. So um sometimes when times are like really really hard um and we're in a survival state scorpio energy can be good to summon or, or rally around because they they are the ones uh, going forward and surviving and doing what needs to be done in harsh times in order to get through so um very good with this kind of energy so there's a joke that uh, if there's a plane crash and there's one one survivor from the plane crash it will always be a scorpio <laughs> 
Um, so yeah, you know, if we think of the arachnids, um, like armored and, um, yeah, they are survivalists. So they can have a quite an unnerving presence sometimes, which can, yeah, make potentially make things challenging in a leadership role, which is where softening and having an awareness of, um, that they can be un uh, unnerving for others so that they can temper their, um, response to people. So Scorpio's concern with transformation, so it can very much be um, leadership in, in transformation um, throughout the Scorpio's um, life or Scorpio placements. There are usually um, many, many different forms of transformation that they go through. Through these, these experiences, they can guide others through their own self-transformation. So Scorpio, I very much see this as leading through the dark. So... Scorpio placements within their lives usually have many shadow expressions to, to navigate. So through awareness and exploration of the shadow, they can lead themselves and others out, but they can get lost in the dark, which is what Scorpio needs to be aware of. So, you know, you go into the darkness with the intention of coming back out. So, um, yeah, very much navigating the shadow realms, the shadows of the psyche, this, the internal, um, difficult areas within so that they can then help others and lead through them through that so um because of this navigation of the shadow um uh, there can be uh, leadership in terms of areas of psychology um and healing so it's kind of like um i, I always think of like lord of the rings where uh, frodo and sam are um fighting the spider up in the pass and uh, Sam brings out the star glass, which shines a light in, in, in the dark. So there's a huge spider about to eat them and um, they've got a, a, a glass, which they bring out, or Sam brings out and it blinds the spider and enables them to escape the darkness. So this is, in my opinion, what Scorpio can help to lead others with is a light in the dark. So even though it's like a, um, uh it's quite a lot of masculinity in there you know ruled by mars and you know quite you know difficult themes um scorpio is also a yin sign now within this um i think like an encapsulation is uh of of the yin nature is that still waters run deep and there's often a deep vulnerability within scorpio so scorpio can massively benefit by showing its vulnerability and leading in showing vulnerability healing it healing oneself and also showing others what it is to be vulnerable you know there's so much strength in our vulnerability and we think there's not but actually it can be our greatest strength can be in expressing our vulnerability you know everyone has difficult areas to navigate and difficult things with inside you know, within them and you know things that they rather not express or not want other people to know about them but sometimes through the sharing this can open up like so many things for a person open up the water uh, the watery gates of healing and yeah help them to develop themselves and you know in this way scorpio can shed its armor um and rise up so yeah you know there's so much strength in expressing our vulnerability and when we're not able to express our vulnerability this creates problems you know male suicide is is the biggest killer of men you know, and there's just this like inability to open up into vulnerability because of all of the stories like, you know, boys don't cry and, you know, all of this BS stuff about masculinity and the idea of what that should be. And, and it, it's just, uh, you know, it causes men to suffer in silence. And what's <laughs> that's not strong. It's not a strong place. So, yeah, like a big part of um, Scorpio and every sign is is to be able to open up onto our vulnerability and share with trust with others. So moving on to Sagittarius. So Sagittarius, this is um, uh, another like, like key warrior archetype. So like uh, all the, all of the fire signs very much embody this warrior like energy. Um, so Sagittarius, we can kind of think of the, um, it's, it's again, another hunter and is very much firing its arrows of truth. So they are warriors of truth and freedom. Uh, that is, uh, pe people can rally around that, you know. To fight for freedom is, is a very noble fight, in my opinion. So this is the Sagittarian energy. 
fires of truth burning away what is not needed and what isn't true with their fires of truth um aiming towards the heavens with their arrows of truth always seeking to find those areas within life whereby they can illuminate um, themselves and others through truth so it's fire sign ruled by jupiter yang in orientation and it's very much expansion based the highly motivational highly motivational energy so anyone knows the sagittarian uh they like banks around and really optimistic is like beautiful energy now uh this is like great for leadership like my god like you need to be able to motivate others to um to yeah take leadership within themselves because like you know this, this is another aspect of leadership it's just like leading others to lead themselves you know it's, it's it's not about giving the man a fish it's about teaching the man to fish so you know Sagittarius can be a fantastic motivational energy to lead others to lead themselves with highly adaptable being mutable um so like Gemini Virgo and Pisces can adapt to multiple different situations um and uh yeah like I think like for, for me one of the best illustrations of uh, Sagittarian warrior energy is what William Wallace from the film Braveheart. Um, like this, this for me, um, what Mel Gibson did with that film was just incredible. I, I actually watched this film in the last Sagittarius season. I highly recommend uh, watching Braveheart um, again because it for, with through this archetypal lens because it's damn powerful. Like my God, so. Um, William Wallace would be what I would say definite Sagittarian energy. So, you know, everyone knows the most famous scene at the end whereby, uh, sorry if you've not watched Braveheart, but uh, he's he's killed at the end. And then while he's being hung, drawn and quartered, he shouts, freedom, freedom! You know, the core, his cause for truth and justice was so strong that he... Uh, gave his life for it and even when he was being tortured and you know having his organs pulled out and in, in just like unthinkable amounts of pain to the point where his friends in the in in, in the crowd were begging him to wanted him to just have, plead for mercy no because truth was was too important to him and yeah freedom freedom being a Sagittarian value. So yeah, for me, if, if you want to understand warrior energy of through the Sagittarian lens, watch Braveheart. Um, yeah. You know, pioneering for the freedom of his country. Sagittarius, freedom, truth. Very important qualities for the leader. leader. So moving on to Capricorn next. So this is very much the warrior in terms of work ethic. Like, my God, like Capricorn have a steadfast work ethic, like very, very good people to uh, to initiate things, but also um, they're grounded cardinals. So they, uh, in my opinion, they can also have a good ability to see things through. So kind of edging on fixed energy as well with, with, with Capricorn. So yeah, like, they're very much like it's all about getting to the top of the mountain and doing what's difficult so these are the guys this is the energy of like digging the trenches doing the work that needs to be done and leading by example in a grounded way so the capricorn can teach and lead others um within their different areas by being that model example of what it means to do the work so in this way they uh, embody their warriorship um and leadership so it's the quest for the top but also needs to be tempered with softness so this is why like the opposition is cancer so the nurturing energy so um capricorn is very much concerned with the father um typically not always cancer is concerned with the mother archetype so this is where both our oppositions again can can do well by um by embodying but embodying qualities of the other so cancer can usually um you know maybe needs a bit more hardness sometimes and a little bit more work ethic not that cancers don't have work ethic but it's just a, like a different spin a different way of looking at it 
whereas uh, which which is is the mother, whereas the uh, the father archetype Capricorn needs softness and nurturing, and this is where you know for a child to grow up healthy needs the mother and the father, the moon and Saturn, which is Capricorn. So moon being the feminine nurturing energy, Saturn being the kind of more authoritative restrictive energy. So, and also as well, Capricorn um, uh, can be uh, extremely disciplined as well, being ruled by Saturn, which is the, the, the planet of, dis of discipline. So within leadership, the Capricorn energy um, needs to be mindful about um, stepping too much into the authoritative place. Um, so because of that sternness that Saturn brings. Um, but also, yeah, I mean, Capricorn is an earth sign as well. Um, it's yin so also capricorn is, is 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 the sea goat so this is um the goat that's that that that's that swims like half um half goat half fish so you know this kind of lends to piscean themes um also lends to the water so you know i would consider capricorn mostly an earth sign but partly a water sign so this again this brings a deep sensitivity and an ability to connect um, also potentially having challenges with uh, exposing vulnerability but having that sensitive sen sensitivity but having like the gruffness of the goat which can sometimes um, yeah maybe get in the way of that sensitivity so Capricorn can usually do well by softening and uh, yeah connecting with their sensitivity that that, that they, they have but is often um, yeah not not brought to the fore but in terms of leadership qualities like and warriorship qualities, uh, Capricorn is going to be a fantastic addition to to the team um, of leadership because of their work ethic. Um, to be a leader, we need to lead by example. So this is very much the lesson of Capricorn. Moving on to Aquarius. So these are the humanitarian warriors. So they are the fight. This is the fight for individualization. So, yeah, being one's own individual person. They're very community orientated and will kind of, they'll fight for community themes and community projects and ideals. So, you know, the, these, these might be the guys who would be, um, you know, say if, uh, you know, some contractor company, some, some big business wants to buy the youth center and knock it down so they can build some flats. The Aquarian is just like, no because this will um, you know, damage the community. We won't have a youth center and I'm gonna fight for this. I'm gonna stand for this. This is very much the Aqu Aquarian, like so humanitarian. So, you know, you might also find the the um, uh, the Aquarian being like the eco, eco warrior as well. Um, yeah, like fighting for humanitarian causes. So, um, yeah, it makes me think of a film called The Constant Gardener, which is like a phenomenal film. Um, uh, I'm not going to say too much about it because I don't want to ruin the ending like I did with Braveheart. <laughs> but um, yeah, this is a, the story of a man whose wife um, was a very, very strong advocate for a certain humanitarian cause and she fought for it. Like, my God, tooth and nail, she fought for this humanitarian cause so that's that's like a good example of the the warrior nature of the aquarian energy is fighting for humanitarian causes so can't really recommend that film the constant gardener so aquarius is very much the leaders into the new world or the aquarian energy we are in the age of aquarius so uh, we entered the age of aquarius in 1948 and we moved into the second degree of aquarius in 2020 uh, which was also correlated with covid interestingly so um yeah so we've seen an explosion in technology the last uh 100 years so technology is very much a, an aquarian value so we're very much moving into this new different world which is vastly massively different to how it's been for the last few thousand years so yeah you you, you could say that the aquarian energy is the leadership that we're all embodying in this new age in some way shape or form but in truth we're actually 
embodying all of the energies if not we have the capacity to embody all of the energies so aquarius is a mental sign um you're ruled by uranus it's all about all things unorthodox so aquarius is this is very much like out of the box thinking unorthodox thinking which uh for a leader it's like really really important or for a warrior is really really important you know i think of like battle and um you know when the um um the 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 army might think of some really, really out of the box strategy oh, okay so so in world war ii um i think it was a german a german army there was like two fronts and there was a forest in between them and uh basically they were kind of in a stalemate i i, I believe it was the german army that had the art out of the box idea to cut a path through the forest they cut a path through the forest so the tanks could get through and they ended up winning the battle so uh this is an example of like out of the box thinking um but you know it's a fairly negative example um but you know I'm sure you can think of examples within um you know your coaching practice whereby you you've you've needed to think outside the box in order to help someone so come up with a solution that the client isn't able to to come up with themselves and lead them into that place so out of the box thinking aquarian value really important for leadership and warriorship so aquarians opposition is leo so this is very much the axis of the heart and mind so we need both to lead um so too much leadership from the heart not enough thinking then um you know too much passion and then that that can you know lead us into a place whereby we've not strategized effectively um too much um mind without the heart and yeah this can be a very cold leadership um so you know it puts me in mind of a story that Matthias uh, told told me on the podcast the other day of um you know a general who would kind of put 2000 war um 2000 soldiers to death and just see them as a statistic in 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 battle so this is what happens when we approach things too much with the mind and not with the heart um so a balance of the two which is what that whole axis is about the axis of the heart and mind so Aquarius is uh, Yang, so the water bearer, so masculine archetype. So the water being consciousness, Aquarius is very much creating the masculine container so that the consciousness can flow. So being representative of the water, the feminine element. So within this age, the shift in consciousness is heralded by the age of Aquarius. Aquarius masculine container that can bear the shift and the flow of consciousness so the last um archetype within our zodiac is pisces so pisces is regarded as the most spiritual sign it's the end of the zodiac the 12th sign so i very much see this as leadership into the etheric realm so pisces is uh to the two fish one fish in the material world one fish within the spiritual world so yeah they can lead us into the etheric realm so very deep emotional understanding feeling what others need very important quality as a as a leader you know we need to be um concerned for what other people are thinking and feeling listening to people and yeah having the feeling of what others need looking after people is, is also a cancerian theme pisces and cancer both water signs as a scorpio um so having emotional understanding martin luther king pisces moon capricorn sun so you know pisces is concerned with dreams i have a dream so pisces moon dreaming up the dream for um a different world free of racism and capricorn energy grinding that into reality it's the last in the zodiac the last into of our journey so perhaps the leader into the next life once we've gone through the archetypal hero's journey of our life through the 12 zodiac signs what's next what's on the other side so pisces can lead us into these other realms 
And it's very much the the peaceful warrior. You know, back to this concept that we spoke about at the start, you know, being the warrior, being the leader, it's not all about being on the battlefield and, you know, um, doing these uh, warlike things. It's also the being the peaceful warrior, cultivating peace within ourselves so that we can teach others what peace is, cultivating peace within ourselves so that we can cultivate self-leadership, self-leadership and being able to manage ourselves, remain peaceful when times get tough, manage our emotions and minds so that we can orientate ourselves towards greater realms of love and connection, lead ourselves into a place whereby we're able to work on uh, the challenges that we face externally and internally so that we can live better lives. Peaceful warrior. So it's very much Aries is the start, Pisces is the end to the, the head and tail of the dragon. So Aries is very much concerned with the self, whereas Pisces is concerned with the all, everything in all totality, understanding that we are all one. Aries, it's the self, it's the baby. A baby doesn't know that there's anything. Uh, actually, no, interestingly, a, a baby, before it becomes conscious, um, is actually very Piscean because it's it has no separation between itself and and, and others. It believes it is everything until it starts to develop the, the the construct of ego and then very much steps into Aries, me, myself. So there's nothing wrong with that. You know, it's, it's, it's um, you know, it's only if we're acting in the shadow side of that. It's a, it's a necessary function of um, what makes life because without the self, is there another? <laughs> Interesting concept. And you know, feeding on from that, you know, Pisces and, and, and Aries, they're polar opposites, but really they're one and the same thing. Pisces being the connection with all and everything, totality. Aries being the connection with self, which is all anyway, and all totality. So remember, like, the Aries expanding its sense of self to include everyone and everything around it. So, you know, the air is expanding itself to become Pisces and Piscean in, in its, in its um, outlook. So yeah, Pisces very much taking into account the all and everything within it. So, you know, very much within this caring for the planet really much comes within this, you know, caring for all beings on all planes, caring for one another. So it, from Aries to Pisces, this is very much the journey from me to we in recognition that you are another me. And leadership of self is leadership of other. And leadership of other is also leadership of self. It starts with ourselves, though, you know, learning to be uh, leaders in our own lives um, making the right choices for ourselves, doing the right things, doing the things mm, that we know we should do when we should do them. Sometimes that's not always taking action. Sometimes that is resting and relaxing so we can be in the best state possible to serve. So, yeah, the wrapping up, we want to look at 360 degree leadership. So this is the real key aspect of going through this exploration is to give 12 different uh, perspectives, which by no means are exhaustive because these signs are deep, very deep. But this can give 12 different perspectives of 12 different qualities of leadership from each sign. So it's looking at where we need to look to become a more well-rounded leader. How can we use these archetypes to develop ourselves in a 360 degree way? How can we learn from each archetype as well as learn from each other? Because many of us, uh, we, we, we have some, some of these archetypes very strong, but we don't have others. That's where we can learn from others who portray the archetypes that we don't have, and they can learn for us, such as the function of why we're together. So it's very interesting when, when we can compare the charts of our friends, fam, family members, the people we bring into our, into our lives, because we often find that the people we bring in have similar to us but also opposition because they're there to teach us about us so how can we learn from from each other 
Now, the warrior in its highest expression is open, willing to listen and willing to learn. Otherwise, they become the tyrant. Think of uh, Daniel-san from Karate Kid. He was a student. Um, and, you know, Mr. Miyagi, I'm sure, would also say he is, he is also still a student. Always a student, sometimes a teacher. So leadership, we, we need to be uh, really open and willing to develop ourselves and develop our capacity to, to listen to others. Because, you know, you could have 12 grandmasters all sat around a bunch of flowers, but each grandmaster is going to give a different perspective of what those flowers look like. So where we work together, having different people from different aspects um, within life, yeah, because you know this makes the most effective team because we have a rich tapestry of humanity so you know working together learning from each other this is the way to really embody our leadership so some questions to end this module to reflect on and answer what qualities can you, you use to develop your leadership capacities and capabilities? Where needs more balance? You can think between yin and yang, maybe some of the oppositions that we discussed today. How can you spend more time with the warrior archetype? So spending time with the warrior archetype is an antidote for low self-esteem. What kind of daily practice could you bring in to spend more time with the warrior archetype? And the last question to leave you with is, what are you fighting for? So I hope you find this module enjoyable and insightful. Um, really look forward to seeing you in the next module, sending you a lot of love and see you soon.